So then guys, we've literally just a matter of weeks to the potential launch of the brand new M4 MacBooks coming out. We've had loads of leaks and rumors just come in in the last week, giving us even more details and even Geekbench 6 benchmarks for the M4 MacBook Pro. And today I want to give you my thoughts on these leaks that have come in. And also I want to explore the potential of what we could see for the M4 Pro and the M4 Max in Geekbench scores too. But first First of all, let's cover over these leaks that we've had recently in. So we've had this video in from a Russian YouTuber, and Mark German's also given a reference to this to say this is an unboxing of the M4 MacBook Pro. Now, the video is quite interesting to watch because obviously you see the unboxing process and everything like that, and the box looks very similar, if not identical, to the current M3 Pro and the M3 Max MacBook Pros in the space black color. And it looks like space black is coming for the normal M4 this time round, which is quite interesting. Also the fact that there's there's also word of that there's a free ports of USB-C, whereas the current M3 MacBook Pro only has two USB-C ports, but this time it could have the three full fat USB-C ports, just like the M3 Pro and the M3 Max, was also quite interesting to see from this leak that we've had right here. But what also is quite interesting is obviously on the box, it says that we're gonna be getting 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. Now, if you know your stuff right now, the lowest amount of storage that you can get on an M3 MacBook Pro is 512 gigabytes of storage, but that is paired with eight gigabytes of RAM. And including myself, a lot of us complain that eight gigabytes of RAM is just simply not enough in 2024, not alone say 2021 for example, on a pro machine. So it's really really good that Apple look like they're finally actually upping this to 16 gigabytes of RAM as the actual minimum, especially it's paired with 512 gigabytes of storage. Now what I will say there with a little bit of a caveat, there's nothing stopping say right now buying an M3 MacBook Pro and upgrading this to 16 gigabytes of RAM. But hopefully you know Apple have finally listened and 16 gigabytes of RAM is now the bare minimum amount that we are going to be getting. Now up to this point with my own thoughts on what we've seen with the space black color, the extra ports, and also 16 gigabytes of RAM, you know, I think this is quite possible that this could be how Apple are setting up the MacBook Pros. We always kind of knew that the space black would be coming, you know, to the MacBook Pros with the M4. Apple like to do this, think of like Dynamic Island. We got Dynamic Island on the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and then a year later, we got Dynamic Island added to the iPhone 15. And it's the same with the action button. With the action button, say, on the iPhone, we've got this on the iPhone 15 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And then now with the iPhone 16, the normal 16 and the 16 Plus, we have the action button a year later. And Apple could be doing something very similar here where they actually decided that, you know, Space Black's been out for the last ones. And now we're actually going to give it to everybody this time around. And it could also be the same with the Thunderbolt port, that extra Thunderbolt port. It could actually be the same scenario here. If anything, I would argue it actually probably cost Apple more to actually change the design not to have that extra Thunderbolt port inside of it where we've only got two on the M3 model but then just to keep the same design exactly the same and actually have three USB-C Thunderbolt ports instead just like the rest of the model. It just makes a lot of sense. It's easier for Apple to do the production like that. So maybe this is why we're actually getting three of them. And then obviously, like I said, 16 gigabytes of RAM. We've moaned, we've complained, you know, we need more, especially in a Pro machine. This is a MacBook Pro, a starter MacBook Pro. We should be at least getting 16 gigabytes of RAM in 2024, especially with Apple intelligent features and things like this. It is definitely, definitely needed. So moving along then, what about the performance of M4 inside of this MacBook Pro? Well, we've actually had some Geekbench scores leaked to us too with this video. And as you can see right here, what's quite interesting is the single core performance is around about 3,800, which is really impressive. But the multi-core performance, wow, that's a blower. It's over 15,000, what's absolutely unbelievable in its score to actually have here. You know, this is really, really crazy stuff. This is even faster than say the M3 Pro that we have right now, that the M4 is even faster than that with obviously less cores inside of it and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So this is definitely amazing to see this kind of performance gains inside of this chip. And again, I do believe this score could be correct because, you know, we did get scores of kind of in the 14,000 kind of range with the iPad Pro 
our own Geekbench sort of scores that you can see right here. And so again, it just, just makes sense that you could actually get this with the actual M4 inside the MacBook Pro, paired up with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Also a fan as well, what the iPad is missing to help cool it down by doing, you know, a thrashing of a Geekbench sort of kind of scoring. You're probably gonna get a higher result, which is really, really good to see here. But what also I'm gonna mention is that there's also the potential we can kind of semi-predict now of what the M4 Pro and also the M4 Max could potentially look like in its Geekbench kind of scores. And in fact, what I've done here, I've made a graph for you. So you can see here that I've got my graph sort of scattered around with the M2 and the M3 scores that we've got on average on sort of Geekbench. And then obviously what I've done is I've actually kind of made my own kind of semi-scores that I've made around for the M4 Pro and the M4 Max. Now with single core performance, you can see that I've upped it slightly over what we've got on the M4. And the main reason is if you look at the M3 Pro and the M3 Max, the score was slightly higher with them because obviously the additional cores and everything like that, the single core performance just slightly increased. So these scores here, like I'm gonna say, these are my own predictions. Doesn't mean it's exactly gonna happen, the exact scores you're gonna see here, but I reckon it's gonna be around about this amount. This is my prediction here. And then for single core performance, as you can see right here, we could be getting around 3,900 or so for the M4 Pro and the M4 Max, what is super impressive. But then what's also impressive is the multi-core score. If Apple kept the same amount of CPU cores as the M3 Pro, so this was a 12-core CPU, you could see here we could get a score probably around about 17,100 this time. Over 17,000 is what I would say. What is really, really impressive to see out of an M4 Pro. But then for the M4 Max, again, keeping the same amount of cores like last time, so this means 16 cores inside of it. Well, then I believe we could be getting a score of say 26,200, what is super impressive. This is even more impressive than the likes of the M2 Ultra exists right now. And you can see here, this is really amazing to see what kind of scores we could be getting here. And that's if Apple just keep the core mounts exactly the same. But personally, what I believe is, I think like Apple have done like in previous years, they love to add on a few more extra CPU cores wherever they can can and I believe that they probably might add an additional two extra cores for the likes of the M4 Pro and also the M4 Max. At the end of the day, Apple did exactly the same with the M4. We got two extra cores. Obviously, you've got the binned version too, but just say the full fat sort of version, you could actually get even more cores this time round. So with this chart here, I've updated it then with the extra cores. And you can see that right here in this chart with the updated cores, and now we've actually got 14 cores for the M4 Pro. And with this, you can see this increases the amount of sort of Geekbench sort of score on multi-core performance. The single core performance probably stay around about the same as before, but you can see we will get probably around about a 20,000 sort of score this time around Geekbench 6 for the M4 Pro if, like I said, we actually had two additional cores added to it. I believe it would be around about this amount if Apple did do this. They could add less cores or more cores, we just don't know, but to say if they did add two, this is what I believe could happen. And the same with the M4 Max. If they added additional two more cores, making up to a 20 core CPU inside of it, well, you can see right here, we'd be getting scores about 32,700. What would be absolutely mind blowing. This would be way faster than say the M2 Ultra or anything like that. It would be super, super fast. So yeah, this is absolutely crazy to see that if Apple decide to do this, this is the kind of scores and this is the kind of speeds that we could actually see in performance gains this time round in 2000. 24 with these new chips. And this is where I believe, say, if you compare, say, the M2 Max to the M4 Max, even here, we're talking double the amount of sort of performance we're getting. So you can imagine if you're on the M1 Max right now, this might be the time where you might actually decide that potentially, yeah, it might be worth upgrading now to an M4 series because you're actually going to get that performance gain. Don't get me wrong, the M1s are stupidly fast, even today in 2024. But if you want that extra more performance again, this time, I'd actually say it does look like if we do get these extra two cores and everything that it could be the chance for you to actually upgrade and get that better performance because it does look absolutely incredible with the potential we're going to get here.
something else what is amazing is the giveaway that we're doing on this channel right now and it is for this. This here is an iPhone 16 Pro Max and I'm going to be giving this away to one lucky subscriber near the end of December time, before Christmas time. That's when I'm going to be giving it away. And you can enter into this giveaway right now. And all you have to do to enter in is just put down in the comments at this stage of what technology you're hoping to get in 2024, even into 2025. Put it down into the comments below. It could be Apple related, UPS. PS5 Pro or something like this. It's up to you. Just put it down in the comments below. And then near the end of December time, just before Christmas, I will be making another video where there will be a few other details to do, like there'll be a form to fill in too for this giveaway and things like this. But more details will come near the end of December time. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure that you've subscribed to this channel, hit that notification bell, because you will want to hear that information. And plus also you need to be a subscriber to enter into this giveaway too. The other thing I just want to quickly say about it is that obviously it is the desert titanium or titanium desert model that we have right here and then also there's 256 gigabytes of storage inside it and I'm giving it away to anybody in the world so yeah it's an international giveaway the last thing I just want to quickly say is sadly there are still lots of scammers and spammers out there people still impersonating me to telling you to telegram you know to whatsapp or to direct message by instagram please do ignore these people better still as you can see right here please do report them so next of all then when when are we likely going to get our hands on these new MacBook Pros and also when's the announcement going to come from Apple? Well, I personally believe invites will probably go out next week, probably around about the 14th or 15th. That's when we'll get that kind of banner coming up telling us when it's going to be happening. And then personally, I believe the event will happen about two weeks later. So we're talking kind of the end of October sort of time. So I believe this will probably happen on the 28th or the 29th of October, around about that sort of time. Very similar sort of timing to the Scary Fast event that we had last year in 2023 and that's when we'll see these new MacBooks and we'll also probably get the Mac Mini, potential updates to the iPad Mini 2 and then we'll be able to probably get our hands actually on them on November 1st, the Friday. So later on that week is the most likely time we'll probably be able to get our hands on them. If not, maybe a week later after the event. So we're talking the 4th or the 5th of November time and that's the most likely time we're going to get our hands on them. So to be honest, it's not that far away. Less than a month now that these new MacBook Pros will be out. But with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also, if you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews and technology, you know, and all the good comparisons and reviews and everything, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye bye.